time, guys. Nice to meet you. One of the goals of today is to shake hands with the river. Because the Penobscot float trip was designed to give the students a first-hand look at the river and try to get the experience of watching how the water's flowing in different directions in the river and also how it affects the structure of the bottom and how that relates to the water supply and the sediment supply in the watershed in general. And they're going to take that experience and develop a response to the hypothesis. Since the last glacial maximum, the Penobscot River has evolved into a sediment supply limited system. How would you sort that out? How would you test that hypothesis and what kind of things in the river are important to that outcome? There were a couple different graduate projects. For me, it's actually really neat being able to come here just as a transfer in and then you're doing all of this research and you're right in the middle of it and you can actually see results of what they've been working on. You can have a mosaic of how the river changes too. And that, and that basically is recording the roughness that Sean was talking about. And it's really neat as an undergrad to be able to help them with that research and see that some of the stuff that you did kind of relates to a bigger picture that also helps with the scientific community as a whole. Fact, this is the actual um, total storage area, the reservoirs. We started ERS 200 to, to accomplish something that I've always wanted to do, which is to try to get away from simply feeding the students content all the way through. And that's created by long-term processes that have shaped the bedrock and the topography of the landscape. We wanted to give the students an idea of why it is that those of us who go into science actually do, what it is that's exciting about it. Partial support for the activities was provided by the Senator George J. Mitchell Center for Sustainability Solutions and the National Science Foundation. The protection of water quality and, and aquatic habitat is really important to our communities and to the state of Maine for a number of reasons and it's inspiring in terms of uh, having a role in sustainability for future generations. It's, it's huge, yeah, it really is. The, it, I mean, you can, you can see it in the students anyway. They enjoy the uh, they enjoy being on the river. It was absolutely fantastic. It's a beautiful state and it was a lot of fun and it was a very great experience. It definitely is going to help out in actual field work when I move on to my own projects. Many times rho, g, and h. We were able to see the equations that Sean had given us originally and how water actually responds as the equations do predict and we were able to apply that also to the different models we've seen in labs. I'm a very visual learner. I like to be hands-on, I like to be outside. And when you go out and you look at what they're showing you, you can see how it directly correlates to what you've been learning in class. So it's not just the book learning, you're getting to go out and you're getting to see, you know, like what it would actually look like in the landscapes that you're working on. The Earth is a really dynamic place, and and because it's uh, it's dynamic, uh, things change at, on many different time scales. But it's very difficult to teach that, I think. And so this, I think, gives the impression that there are multiple different time scales that are relevant to the kinds of behavior that they're observing. This department is absolutely phenomenal. I couldn't be happier being here. Whatever you're interested in, specifically, you get that, and then you get broader experience with every single division in the department. So I think it's the greatest school I could have possibly come to.